Hey! Welcome to the Driven Stone Podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle, what are we drinking this week? Buddy, I went to the liquor store. That's always a good start. That's usually where I find our stuff. <laughs> the we, liquor store? I went to the liquor store that I go to because they have a really good selection. Okay. They, they probably had about three different bottles that I was kind of debating amongst oh um because it's it's one of those liquor stores that i would say 90 percent of their things are marked up way too high but every once in a while you, you go in there and you find a good deal you get a gym yeah yeah what'd you get um can, can i ask what you were between because i mean they, i can they, they had the bunahaven gold barley or Ooh. something okay and it wasn't much mm. might go back and get it yeah um they also had a uh, balcones we were talking about that the other day right what, do you remember which one? Um, Baby Blue. Okay, yeah. So, And that wasn't very much. I'm going to go back and get that one too. Yeah. And then I also found an Irish whiskey that we haven't <laughs> had. And we, we we just did the Irish a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago for St. Paddy's Day. St. Yeah. Paddy's Day. And we didn't really devote the whole episode to it. No, we did. What'd you get? I got us the Red Breast. Okay. Single pot still. Okay. Aged 12 years. Okay. Cask strength. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I've been eyeing that bottle for honestly like a year and a half, man. As have I. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They had okay. a good deal on I it. I am excited. It was as cheap as I've ever thought I would find it, <laughs> and so I pulled the trigger on that for sure with a quickness. For sure. Can, can I just tell everybody like this bottle? It's kind of difficult to find here in the states. I mean, I say that because we have a lot of listeners from Ireland, Scotland, England, and and kind of just you know Northern Europe in general. Um, but this is kind of really difficult to find here. I've seen it at a couple of places and it's always been at North a price that I was not willing yeah, to pay. For sure. So yeah. you found it at a good price. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. Listen, I can see the bottle on the table. Mm-hmm. Will you read the bottle for me? Bottle words? Please. Bro, like you should see the box words. <laughs> like there's well, a, lot a lot of box lot, words. A lot of words. It's a box novel. Full disclosure, you have not opened this bottle at all, yeah, have you? Is, this is unopened. This is, oh, this man. is for the cast. Highly awarded and critically acclaimed, Red Breast 12 Cast Strength is a single pot still Irish whiskey comprising exclusively of pot still whiskeys which have been triple distilled, yes. matured awesome. in the finest oak casts oh, yeah. for no less than 12 years. Oh my God. And left untouched. Oh, ooh, that's yeah. how I like my whiskey yeah. untouched. With a steadfast spirit, Red Breast has proudly carried on the tradition of single pot still Irish whiskey since 1912 and is celebrated as the definitive expression of this uniquely Irish style of whiskey. I agree with all of what you just said. Yeah, no, it all sounds right. A cornucopia oh, of shit. dried fruit and lively spice with a butterscotch and barley finish. Man, I love how you just went kind of like full Marvin Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sexy. Every, every fucking bit of it. Um, it gives us some nose um, notes, a little bit of finish, but you know, I like to experience that on my own. Sure, can it's cast strength? What it's the proof? Uh, we're, we're talking uh, one fifteen point two. This is the proof. highest Irish whiskey we've ever had by of all a lot. Of the Irish whiskeys that we've had off of the podcast. Sure, that's what I mean. Like just in general, <laughs> not just on the podcast, not just dripping stone. Like Kyle and Nick, yeah, this is like by this far is the highest Irish whiskey by far. Yeah. I don't know that I've had one over eighty. So yeah, all right, like by a long shot. Well, let's stop talking. Let's get drinking. Okay, buddy. What's going on over there? We're getting there. Okay, there's a lot of like foil. Yeah, anticipation is a good thing. I'm holding my breath and I'm about to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's pop it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, man. There is nothing oh, like that first cork like, yeah, pop, that, man. That fresh pop, perfect. All right, pour that liquid in the glass. Yes, sir. There ain't nothing like that first cork pop and then like first pour or two from a bottle. Just perfect. I'm gonna do me a little swirly whirly, but in the glass, man, it is. It's not brown liquor. It's like light blonde, yeah. like light honey colored liquor. Yeah, yeah. It's you know not. I mean? It's not dark. It's um, yeah. It's more of that honey, honey color. It's which I can't. I can't off the top of my head really think like. I want to say Jameson is usually 
just like regular Jameson. It's yeah. kind of like on the, like the lighter end. Yeah, yeah, like straw water. Yeah. Um, I've had one bottle of Red Breast. This is slightly darker than that, though. I, I remember that bottle. I don't remember it well enough to be able to say. It's slight, like a shade darker just because it's cask strength. It's not watered down. Right. And it is a 12-year whiskey, man. I mean, so it is aging in barrels for quite some time. For sure. Yeah. What you got on the nose? <laughs> Heaven. Whew, proof punch in the face. I mean, I don't really get a proof well, punch. I threw my nose in. I, I dipped <laughs> the tip of my nose. Like you do. Yeah. I dipped my nose in there. Mm. Okay, so backing out of the glass just a little bit, yeah, it's slight, it's proof punch, but it's also like everything good about an Irish whiskey. It's shortbread, yeah, it's vanilla, it's like, it's it's crumbly cookie, man. Mm. Like there, there's like the, the edges of it have like that that toasted oak, absolutely all around it. Like like you're saying, like you get you're getting the honey, you're getting that shortbread, but there's just like this nice little mm. toasted quality right around the edges. Yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of, like, I know we've said this before for um, scotches, but it reminds me of Christmas. Like, there's, like, yeah. like it's just, it it's comfort. <laughs> for like sure. That's, that's, like, I, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. it's comfort. <sighs> it's, it's, there's some slight sweet notes kind of, like, on the periphery, but it's not, like. Yeah, I get, I get like, honey. Yeah, it's, it's, like, a subdued sweet. It's not, like, like you know, super punchy sweet. Yeah, it's not, like, marshmallowy or. It's, like, well-rounded know. sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to stop sniffing. There's, I don't want to drink it. I know. I was like, I can just smell it. There's like a, there's like an herbal quality too. A little bit of herbaceousness. Yeah. <sighs> Woo. I can, okay. I, I, I agree with you though. It's like, it's like, I could smell this it's all like day. It's like cologne. It is. Yeah. Just put that under your lapels and just go to town. That's what I always say. All right. I'm going in. Oh my God. I don't, I don't understand why that's not the, like, Wow. Speechless, exactly. I agree with you 100%. Uh, this expression, if I'm correct, I feel like I, I did a little bit of research and, mm-hmm. and noticed that this this expression of red breast, their cask strength, didn't come out until 2015. Wow, so why? This is a relatively new thing. Uh huh. And that's what I'm thinking. Like, why is this not red breast? It goes back to the conversations we've had before about cask strength whiskey. This is not like I, I believe, and I, I know just you believe this too because we've had this conversation. That a, a cast strength whiskey tends to be the best expression of that whiskey. Right. It's it's all the notes that you get, and and if you want to dilute a little bit, just you know pop a little water in there. Nothing wrong with that. But when you get an eighty percenter, you know maybe even a ninety percenter, it's almost like it's what we want, but we're just going to water it down a little bit. It makes it go a little bit further. It makes it a little cheaper. We can sell it cheaper. Right. All of those things are true, but man, and I haven't had a bottle of red breast myself, mm-hmm. but I, I had a, a couple of pours with you. Sure. This is everything good about a red breast. And then some it's shortbread <laughs> dialed up, but it, it's, it's shortbread with everything else that you love about whiskey. Yeah. The, the oak is coming through you're getting that nice bitter, like it's not it's the not sweet. it's not a one flavor no. straight through. You're getting such a roller coaster of like flavors coming in and out. Right. And then the proof is beautiful. It's a ride. That's exactly I mean, you're one hundred percent right. It's a ride. You know, anyone who's listened to more than like three episodes know that like oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate there's no one note. I appreciate that like you get, you know, some sweet, you get some shortbread, you get some spice, you get some proof, you, you know, you're you're kind of <laughs> moving through that. Yeah. Like it, it's like I I I really enjoy it. like, you know, I don't remember which one recently it was. It might have been the the writer's tears. Right. Of a one note kind of but like it's a great note. Yeah. Just friendly. write it. Sure. Was that the one? Where where like it was like the comparison of like sometimes you want a lazy river, sometimes you want a roller coaster. Maybe. I don't remember if that's what it was. They all run like, together. Th- this, like, it's, <laughs> your your first taste is like, oh, yeah, no, this is this is Irish. Yeah. It's just giving you all those kind of basic Irish whiskey notes. Right. Sure, this is going to be good. But then it's like, like you're saying, but then you go on this roller coaster of like, here comes the proof. Oh, shit. There's some spice <laughs> following along with that. Yeah. That's giving you like this little pop. And then you got to come over the top of that and then you're coming down that man this bitter comes through that's like got this nice little toasty oak uh quality to it like, like i don't understand why this is not more of a thing i'm, I'm gonna finish your sentence i don't know why you dilute this into a uh, an 80 percenter yeah 
what, wh- why, why would you that? why would you ever want anything but this? Right. I, I I agree completely. And and that's just it. Like, you know, here's here's our best expression. And it's kind of like the Savannah from a couple weeks ago. Here's our best expression. Oh, by the way, we make an 80%er or whatever the regular Savannah is. Like, right. wh- why do that? Or, you know, here's here's our um I don't know that maybe that's not too fair because I like easy, but I like the easy barrel proof as well. You know, like ah, that's hard to say, but you can't to me, if you're a, a, if you like whiskey, if you're interested in a whiskey journey, if you don't experiment with cask strength, you're missing out. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we, we said this some point early episodes talking about how we enjoyed scotch, how much we enjoyed other variations, but like it's so hard to find anything other than an 80 proof. Right. Right. And that's why, like, you know, that's why I think. And then when you found the Lafroig, the cast cast strength, strength, yeah. like that really stuck out as right. like, this is amazing. Yep. This is just more proof. It, exactly. <laughs> it. And, and I, not, I, not proof proof but like this is evidence sure of like that that's what we've always said ah, i see what you did this there. has got to be what you want yeah and and that's just it like it, it takes all the good notes of what you already like and it just like it, it allow it opens it up it like it broadens that horizon a little bit and says like okay try this oh you get these notes and you get these notes and you get these notes and it's just kind of pervasive throughout it yeah for sure man good on you ireland as a whole like yeah delicious you did it congratulations you did it you done you done done the thing this is it like Uh, this is it uh, i mean i i want i want to you know obviously there's other expressions maybe those are equally as amazing right but holy shit here in the u.s it's difficult to find bottles of this and that's you know that's both what i like absolutely hate about whiskey in general but absolutely love because i know you know all of our 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 friends over in the uk just in general like when we talk about bourbon they're like yeah you know we can get some of this stuff but it's hard to find these things i feel the same way about red breast i i don't know this for sure but i bet you if you walk into you know any liquor store in ireland you can probably find a cast strength red breast it's going to be about 30 or 40 dollars cheaper than what we can find it it's probably readily available available but same same deal of like can someone in you know in uh lincolnshire find a jack daniel single barrel barrel proof i don't know let us know lincolnshire and let us know how you feel about the jack daniel single barrel barrel proof but can they find it you know i i don't know we could literally go down to the, the liquor store on the that's corner and probably find about practically every store here exactly so you know that's that's kind of both like again the frustrating and the the interesting part of of uh, whiskey and whiskey journeys in general, but wow, I suggest you if you like Irish whiskey at all, go find the Red Breast Single Pot Still for sure. That, like that's an expression. delicious. Holy moly! Mm. All right, so yeah, we got a beverage. We do. It's all right. <laughs> uh, you know, it's pretty good. It'll do. Uh, now that we got that. What do you want to talk about this week? All right, so we enjoy music. We we've had a whole episode about music. We did. We did. Okay. More than one? I don't know. We, we did, did we do a John Williams? We didn't do a John Williams episode. I don't think we've we've definitely talked about totally, music. Totally though. mentioned him, but I know sure. we did I know we did at least one music album. That's episode. true. Yeah, we did. That's right. About a year ago probably. Um so sometime back in the fall. Right. Right in the middle of quarantine. Sure. Came across an album. I am a huge fan of music scores. Yeah. It's like movie scores. Like Sorry. Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. John Williams, right? Some other guys. <laughs> somebody that nailed I, it. <laughs> somebody that I have really grown to appreciate, as I'm sure a lot of people have. Sure, is Michael Giacchino. Yeah, absolutely. Have loved his stuff ever since I've been introduced to it. Which for me personally, I didn't watch Lost mm-hmm. or some of the other uh, Alias right. shows that he did, but like fell in love with the man at The Incredibles. Absolutely. And every other Pixar movie that he's done since then, I literally I literally have like music from Ratatouille on uh, like a playlist that I listen to. One hundred percent. Or up. Yeah. Um I, I I love his music like to no ends. I'm never surprised when I find a movie score that I really enjoy and I go and I look it up. Who did that? Right. Oh, it's Michael oh, Jackie. No, no, no doubt. Sure. Um 
the man is amazing. Yeah, I would say my first introduction to Michael Giacchino, which I didn't know at that point, was the original Medal of Honor game. Like late <laughs> yeah, 90s, I mean, early 2000s. I don't remember exactly when it came out. But totally. Like, like I, I played that. Yeah. Don't necessarily, you know, the, the, the score doesn't really stick out as like a, yeah. Right. But like, for sure, but I, I, I would remember. To some degree, it. like that's the mark of a good score is that it enhances what you're already doing. Like, you know, I think about... Um, Hans Zimmer for Inception. Like, I don't, I think if you notice the score for Inception, like you're just someone who's like a a, a music like nerd, I guess. Sure. But like when you're watching Inception for the first time, you don't necessarily notice the music, but you like feel it. Right. That's the mark to me of a great score is like it enhances what's already going on. And to me, that that's kind of what Michael Giacchino's you know, my first experience anyway with him uh, in terms of Medal of Honor, um, I did watch Lost and and it, you know, totally makes sense. Right. It enhances that experience. And then you're right. You get the Incredibles, which I think the story is like they really wanted the guy who did the score for uh, James Bond. Some, some of the, the Bond films. Right. For some, sure. Something like that. And, you know, um, they wanted that aesthetic. Right. That that guy wasn't interested. Oh, He's like, okay. Well, you know, I've done that. I'm not really interested in going back to it. Sure. I'm, I'm looking forward. Right. And they found Giacchino. And I guess at the time, he was, you know, ha- had his connections, but uh, Brad Bird, who's a really good friend of J.J. Abrams. Exactly. They, they all kind of got together. And so, like, you, you need to use this guy. And he, he was able to recreate that perfectly. 100% that, 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 so. that Bond genre. And that's what so it's, well. it's like a lounge version of Bond. Totally. Like, and it's perfect. Totally. It's the, the score for the, the Incredibles is pretty damn perfect. Like, yeah. it's great. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I'll, I'll always, for the, you know, for the past decade, been a huge fan of the guy's work. So, if not longer. If not longer. Yeah. But I've, I've always kind of looked into his work. Like, I've, I've listened to his stuff when I'm working, when I'm painting, when I'm studying, he was always like somebody that like, you know, I, I, I kind of just want to be in a groove. Right. I'll look up, you know, and I'll go pick an album of his. Right. Just great background music too. So during the pandemic, at some point in time, I'm in that, I'm in that groove. Right. Like, you know, I, I just need, I just need some like chill music that can, I, I can play. I look up for whatever reason. I look up Giacchino. Let me find something of his that, you know, ah, oh, there's Star Trek. You love Star Trek. That theme is amazing. Yeah. Not right now. I don't, I don't want that. I've listened <laughs> to it. I, I don't want Ratatouille. I don't want Up. I don't want Coco. Something Giacchino that I don't know. I go all the way down to the bottom of like the albums that are suggested to me. Mm-hmm. And there's this album called Travelogue. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm like, huh. What's this? What movie is this? <laughs> all right. So this is at the very bottom of the playlist. This must be something he did decades ago right this, this has got to be like really early first on. first iteration of Giacchino right so like cool like let me see what was he doing back then like what maybe, maybe this is something that he did that like garnered him a lot of attention and stuff like that right I'm, yeah I'm gonna listen to this it's uh, by some novella orchestra the nouvelle orchestra modernica sure yeah yeah this sounds fantastic sure this, this is right up my alley play <laughs> I play this thing oh my god Mind blowing for like this is this is amazing. Yeah. Th- there's like there's these narrative elements that are accompanied by these orchestral movements and things like that. There's like this narrative quality that goes throughout the entire album, and I'm like, man, this is fantastic. The dude did this at the beginning of his career. This is amazing, <laughs> right? No wonder he's as like you know as amazing as he is. That he's done all these different scores and stuff. Like this is fantastic. I come to find out. Literally, just like a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> that that album was not released until quarantine, like October, like October oh. of last year. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that this was like some sort of a passion project that he's always had in the back of his mind, but just didn't have the time because he's doing in Jurassic World and uh, Spider Man right. and every Pixar movie and all these different things that he finally had the time thanks to quarantine, thanks to the pandemic, to do this amazing uh, creative endeavor that he's always wanted to do. And that's what I read, too, that like this was something that uh, kind of a passion project he's wanted to do for 
almost a decade now and just was swamped with everything else. And like, that's not him saying like, God, I'm so busy. That's just him saying like, I had all these other projects and this is something that I've wanted to do. And with quarantine, with movies not coming out, with, you know, not having projects readily available, I was able to do this. Right. And, and the album itself to me, like knowing you, it's right up your alley. It's this kind of interesting blend of, you mentioned orchestral, this interesting blend of orchestral and lounge and like kind of pink martini esque, right? Mixed with like a healthy dose of 50s and 60s sci fi, right? Then this like overarching narrative that becomes such a thread through the entire album that it also expands. Like it gets you thinking about what this person um, musically is attempting to say. Right. And not only do you have a, a bit of narration, the narration maybe takes up 30 seconds for each of the tracks. Right. Um, there's something like maybe 11 like tracks. Five, five minute tracks. Yeah. Five minute tracks and maybe 30 seconds of that. And there's music in the background of the, the narration. But the narration just kind of like orients you for each of the tracks. And it's it's totally right up your alley. And when you told me about it, I was like, and I listened to the first, I think it's the second song. It's actually like you really get the the, the gist, aesthetic yeah. and the gist. Yeah. I'm like, oh, totally. This is right up Kyle's alley. Like it just, it feels like something Kyle would like. And my first listen through, I was like, yeah, okay, I get this. But when you really like sit down with this album and you think about what Jaquino is trying to accomplish here, and you think about what each of these pieces is saying, not only narration wise, but like through the music, right? It really takes on this this narrative quality that I just really appreciate and really gravitate towards. Like when when you think about the job of the composer of a score, right? A a, a cinematic score. Generally, the the music is there to push forward enhance right exactly the story it's either yeah it's it's to enhance the characters it's this character's theme right or it's it's this moment's theme and that and that's how you kind of connect to the visual of you know the the music helps me understand the drama that's happening Mm -hmm. so to do to do an album that is completely taking away the visual Right, exactly. And I'm still going to try to create this narrative with minimal dialogue and push through a story just with music. Yeah, and and like you're saying, like I mean, it it, it totally like fired every musical giggle spot that I have <laughs> <laughs> because like giggle spot. I it, love it, that. It's totally like I mean, it, it's the lounge music quality of it. There's like there's there's so much music that it comes through with this like sci-fi kind of feel to it yeah. of like sci-fi of like the fifties and sixties, like Jetsons, yep. you know, yep. kind of like that, that kind of future. Day of the earth stood still kind of like just weird like, for sure. I'm, I'm going to the drive in kind of sci-fi. Right. And then there's like elements of like these like tiki room yeah. elements of like tribal the jungle. Exotic, yeah, 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 totally. There's some operatic moments for like, sure. Like you get, yeah. You know, once the once the narrative gets kind of built up to this more dramatic moment, right? Right. The yeah, last like the several opera kind of comes in. Sure. Like the the fat lady starts yeah. singing. Man, Let's like real quick, take a quick short break, and I want everybody to hear just a little bit of what we're talking about. Okay, here okay. we go. The cabin doors hiss, and I take my first steps into the wondrous unknown. The climate is warm here. I can feel the moisture in the air hug my skin. It's a welcome sensation as I step further into the emerald landscape. A subtle rosy hue paints the sky in a way that feels more beautiful than I'd ever recalled witnessing. And then I see them. My first inhabitants. I keep my distance so as not to startle them. One of them lifts their hand as a sign of greeting and smiles warmly. Such kindness already. I feel a flutter in my abdomen as I begin to realize I'm home.
so you know that's kind of like what we're dealing with right and you know obviously we can't play the whole thing because we don't roll the rights to the music and we don't want to be shut down exactly but you you at least get a few seconds of kind of like what we're dealing with here um what i really like about it in in the first you know i would say the first several movements if you will is like it's very uh theremin heavy do you know what the theremin is Mm -mm. so that that like like right. that that weird the sci-fi. Kind of, the sci-fi what everybody associates sci-fi with sci-fi right thing. it's it's called a theremin it's an instrument that uses proximity and it's kind of um it, yeah it uses proximity like to some wires and it just it makes that that particular sound so you get that sound and and I really like the use of that cuz that that sound can be super annoying and you heard it in the clip that we just played that like woo right it's the it's the yeah. twilight Zone. Exactly. The sound can be annoying, but here it's used so effectively to convey the setting in which we're in. Yeah. I feel like most tracks kind of start out with that kind of 50s, 60s aesthetic, right. and then the beat comes in. Exactly. The, and then the, the drums, rest of the track the guitar. is like this contemporary take on that same aesthetic. Right. So it just it, drives. Each track kind of begins with this like, um, well, all right, all right. The whole album is is based down into tracks, and those are travel log day, right? Whatever, right? So it's like star log date, and you get a date based on that, like Captain Kirk uh, star log. Yeah, or is it star log? What is it? No, it's uh, it's uh, star date. Yeah. Captain's log, star date, star date. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's that like you know Captain Kirk, nineteen sixty Star Trek esque narration here's the beginning of their episode here you go right you're you're given a character right that is she's never named by the way she is right. never named exactly. although you know it, it, it's definitely a, a female voice but she's a, an an alien for sure jacino calls her an astral traveler and she's looking for a new planet she's left her planet seeking a new planet somewhere right. where she feels more comfortable Trying to escape all of the troubles from back home. Exactly. She's looking for this new utopia. And she arrives on Earth in 2020. She, she arrives on Earth in 2020. She's been to several other planets, has yet to find a success. Exactly. And she's almost tired of searching. She's about to go back home. But you know what? Let me search for this one last planet. Maybe this will give me hope. Yeah. And she lands on Earth. Jakino says, I wanted to tell this weird cosmic tale of responsibility and the idea of what you do when things get bad. Do you run off and try to find a better place that isn't so horrible? Or do you stay and fight and try to make it better? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's so clear. Yep. Um, you, get, you get dialogue of her landing on Earth. Right. And kind of this like hope. Yeah, like this this is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah, look at this the air. Planet. She talks about the air, like feel uh, like on her skin. Yeah, and just the hopefulness. And like the first few tracks are that. My favorite track is track number three. I agree. Which is day three. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. That's like the uh, my my inner dialogue is, <laughs> is that track for sure it, of just like the yeah. Damn, it's so good. From there, it starts to take a turn. She yep. starts to meet inhabitants. Inhabitants, she calls them. Yeah, and they they point out her differences, how she's different from us. Yeah, I think the first one's actually a kid, and like the kid says to her, like, "Why do you have extra fingers?" Right. She's and like, well, I they I use them just the same way you do. Yeah. Like, there's no this is how many I need. Wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. Like this is this is what I need. Like, what do you mean they're different <laughs> and then he says do you have extra toes and she's like well maybe i have just one big one yeah what does that matter <laughs> yeah, and, and then and then like I, I love that little like bit of innocence because the kid and that to me is what's so successful is the commentary is so deep and so rich and yet you have this like you have it from an outsider's perspective and you also have it from the innocence of a kid at first right of the the difference of this person and and the kid says something to like the effect of, well, I won't tell my mom that you're different. She wouldn't like it anyway. Yeah, she won't like that anyway. And it's kind of like a quick and gut then, check of like, oh, and then it kind of plays. Yeah, the music kind of comes. And then halfway through that track, which I think is like the fourth or fifth track, something like that. Yeah, the mom breaks in halfway through this like kind of upbeat. Don't. Thing. Why are you talking to my son? Yeah, like why are you talking to my son? Yeah. 
I don't know where you're from, but we don't do that around here. I got a heavy tongue. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, my fun. Like my son. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, nah, you shouldn't be doing yeah. that. I appreciate it, but like you just stick back with off what lady. you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And and from there, it just it it continues to like you know, it's not a happy tale. Yeah, she she realizes like very very quickly that all the things that she was trying to escape from her original planet are also here and this like rose colored glass hope that she first thought is actually worse here on earth than it was in her initial home planet if you will right and that and that i love that moment where she says that like you know what i was i was wrong it's not how did, how did she say it? Well, at one point, she refers to Earth like this could be my new home, right. and like then she's like, "Oh, but it's oh yeah." Actually, she says it, it's not like it was back home. It's, it's worse. far worse. Yeah, exactly. And she has this like thing of like the the nineteen fifties voice modulator that exactly. makes her sound alien, yeah. really alien in that point where really. there's like this like reverberation in her voice. Yep, where it's like it's far worse yeah and like it really kind of comes through of like the realization of like eh, yeah they're just as bad if not worse. if not worse and then she realizes like home is actually where i want to be home is where i i i, I feel comfortable and like i've been searching for this other place but it's actually home it's that's what i'm yearning for and ultimately the the triumph i guess she she figures out is like Home is what I long for the entire time. I've been traveling at the very, the second track, which is like day one. She says I've been, you know, uh, traveling for, or I haven't had uh, sleep. I haven't slept in what seems like light years or something like that. And, and by the end of it, she realizes that she's longed for home really the entire time since she's left. I think it's, and, and I think it's too, the, the, I'm trying to escape from this like really bad aspect of where I'm from and I'm going to go find a place that doesn't have that. Right. But that thing is universal. Exactly. That disdain for things that aren't me, that right. aren't like me, that that's just universal. That happens everywhere. Ultimately, like what Jokino is to me saying through this as two people who love to travel, you know, like and I think, create exactly the more one travels, the more one figures out that like the things that you were trying to leave behind are present everywhere. And like that, that travel channel like version of things. And we've said this before in a couple of different episodes, the travel channel version of things of like, here's the best parts of this city and the best parts of this city sure. is all well and good. But when you kind of scratch beneath the surface and you get that like Bourdain kind of like, uh, you know what? It's not all roses and beautiful and all that kind of thing. But that can also enhance Exactly. But sometimes that can ruin. But I, I think that it, it proves to the 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 traveler that like the things that you are trying to escape from are also present here, but it just it's because you're on vacation that you don't see that. <laughs> right. But if you hang out for thirty something days like this astral traveler does, right, you start to see all the same things that are in present at home. So to me it mirrors our own desire to travel. Um, for something new, like our own desire to figure out something new, only to realize that the the ideas of home that we are trying to escape are present everywhere. And then it becomes what this traveler kind of says, like, what do we do with that information? You know, do we, do we kind of just like, Oh, all this, this crap, this, this racism, this uh, apathy, this, you know, inability to help one another, so on and so forth. It exists everywhere. And ah, there's nothing we can do about it. Or to me, the last track, maybe two are, is about hope and like, listen, yes, it exists everywhere, but now what are you going to do with that? Right. How are you going to change quote unquote home? Right. She's going to go, this traveler is going to go back to home and theoretically based on my interpretation, she's going to go back home and she's going to figure out how to try and make home better. Right. I agree. I think it's, you know, every, everybody's done that thing where they've gone to a place and stayed a little bit too long. Right. Reality started to set in. Right. You know, and you, and you start to see the not so glamorous aspect. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it's unfortunate. And so it is but it's kind just of natural that, too. Like that's, that's just it's what's 100% natural. Like you, you stop seeing those golden edges and right. you start to realize this place as, 
you know, what it actually is. And so I, I, I totally agree. I think the, the, the kind of the end point is, you know, the traveler found this idealistic utopia, right? Experienced it for a while, loved it, and then saw the downsides of it. Sure. Was, was even like violently attacked. One hundred percent. At some at, at at a point in the narrative, um, and it's what you do with the empathy that you gain from that experience, and what can I do with this now, and go back home and try to make it a better right. place for everyone. It's such a cool thing. It, it's cool in that, like, he's playing with things that we all know, playing with feelings that we all feel, but he's doing so in this, like, f- kind of, no, I wouldn't even call it fresh. Like, I don't think it's fresh. I think it's just, like, a reiteration of what, like, the, the familiar, if you will, like, the things that we've already known, the things that we've already experienced, but it's done so through this interesting lens that I really appreciate right. and really like. Like I totally agree. Like it, it's, it's thematically, it's nothing really new. Right. But the fact that he's doing it through an orchestral presentation. Exactly. That is like mind blowing exactly. for me. Yeah. And like, I listened to a podcast that he did that where he kind of explained it as like Michael Giacchino used, like he went to school to make movies. He wanted to be a director. Exactly. Like he never, he didn't go to school necessarily to become a composer. That was something that was developed over time. Right. He wanted to be a movie maker. Sure. And so the fact that like he's this guy that now has this orchestral musical vocabulary that can tell a narrative through music this way with like just like the most subtle kind of dialogue. Yeah. Like I felt like I could visually see the movie through the music absolutely giacchino has the visuals like he in his head he knows what this whole story looks like exactly and in 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 the uh in the podcast that i listened to he he said that like you know it it would be an animated version kind of an anime right aesthetic that's where he would put it it, it, and you get that. It reminds me a lot of like what the experience between Christopher Nolan and Hans Zimmer was for Interstellar. Right. Where like Christopher Nolan said, okay, Hans, listen, this is the emotion. This is a general like outline of a scene. Make me a song. And Zimmer's like, yeah, okay. And like beautiful. Like if you haven't listened to the Interstellar soundtrack, it is perfection. Um, and, and that's kind of like, because the whole point of it is emotion set against this like, backdrop of of space and family drama and like that's what you get right and and to me like that's kind of what Giacchino has uh done here as well is this aspect of i know what i want to project i know the emotions i want to project and i also want to have this thread throughout that like all of these tracks clearly belong to the same quote-unquote movie but they're just different enough i've given you just a bit of a flavor here yeah to 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 tell this story yeah. and to me this is a, a great example of mu- musical and orchestral storytelling with just a bit of narration to orient you but not so much that like i have to tell you the whole story it's yeah. just i'm going to give you a little bit and here you go the music will give you the emotions that you need to go through this story 100% so yeah. so good Hey, so I noticed that you got another little bit of a pour on the table here. All right, so what I did, yeah, the only other Irish that I have here in the library uh-huh. is the Jameson Black Barrel. You're, you're putting Irish whiskey, in bourbon Jameson bourbon. Irish whiskey, the into Irish whiskey, used and recharred sure. bourbon barrels. Right. So it's got a little bit of extra oomph, oomph mm. a little extra darkness, a little extra Ugh. oak. Yeah, but that's the only thing that I felt like it would kind of be appropriate to throw against another Irish. 80? Yes, sir. So, it is 80 proof. maybe not. Towards here, the end of the episode, let's try it real quick. Okay. All right. All right, going, going back to the, the lovely nose. Of the red breast? Of the red breast. Again, <laughs> kind of bourbony. It really is. Kind of yeah. horny. <laughs> All right, nose in the Jameson. Nothing. Like medicinal, honestly, it it's like I I I get the shortbread, I get Robit- but like subtle <laughs> Robitussin, <laughs> like I get a little bit of like Robitussin. yeah, like a little bit of like no, I I just get cough like, I get like basic Jameson. I'm, I'm gonna take a quick sip of the red breast because okay. we've already done it. Good call. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the Jameson. That sir is an unfair comparison. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, there ain't no way. You know, wait, 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 wait. Right, what are you going to do here? Like, the Jameson is water compared to that. Let me let me take a step back. When you remove the proof aspect just a little bit, because it takes, I mean, come on, we're at 115 down to 80. Yeah. Like, it's, it's water. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it's like, it's not water. It's like sugar water. But the Jameson Black Barrel does have a little bit of a spicy note. Yeah. It kind of comes in at the end. It has all, it has everything that an Irish whiskey is shortbread, a uh, little bit of vanilla, a little bit of like just kind of. A little bit of boring. <laughs> But, I mean, you, you put it up against the red breast and no comparison. The the taste off the front when you first take the sip is like, it's like just oily. It is. It's yeah. like it's like drinking olive oil. <laughs> oh, now that you I know, say that, like, I know, that's not I know. fun. It's not at all. I will say I the like. The aftertaste, once that comes through, kind of gives you something. I like the nose on the, the Jameson Black Barrel more than I like the taste. The nose to me is far better. Okay, and to be fair, again, we're putting it up against the red breast. Can you can you go back to it? You don't have anything left. You want to pour a little bit? Because like now it's like it's vanilla. It's no longer like shortbready. It's just kind of like sugar cookie. Ooh, which is always my favorite cookie at the cookie shop. The sugar cookie. The sugar cookie. Are you okay? The sugar cookie. I it was hear like, you. It was like creamy, and like especially like like the big one, and they would warm it up. Mm-hmm. Bro. What do you what are you saying is better than Talk, a sugar chip? I mean, yeah. I'm talking about the mall cookie shop, and I'm with you. Okay, and I'm okay. disagreeing with you. All right. All right. So that's fine. You're entitled to your incorrect I, opinions. I enjoyed the chocolate chip, but the mall sugar cookie no. warmed up. That was perfection. No, that 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 <laughs> that that was the dark night in cookie form. <laughs> okay i mean okay <laughs> i don't know where you're going yeah. but okay yeah no like you want to see this pencil disappear <laughs> let me give you a sugar cookie. <laughs> all right i can tell you right now i do not dislike the jameson black barrel but like this is a tough like i mean this is a different category this this is like putting like you know johnny walk like regular johnny walker against like the bunahaven like it's just not a yeah, fair fight it's really not and, but i will say this like i love this comparison because you see like general version of irish whiskey and Similarities. what irish whiskey can be and right. that i super appreciate so i'm really glad you did this cuz uh, granted, this is not regular Jameson, but it's like here's the Jameson, but slightly altered. So it's like here's what we here's a variation exactly. But here, like this is red breast, but like the best version of red breast you can get. Great point to throw it up against what Irish whiskey can be. Exactly, it doesn't wow. compare. Yeah, yeah. No, now, that's what it can be. I, and we said this when we did the the quick St. Patty's Day like Irish whiskey writers tears like. Why aren't we doing more Irish? And what can Irish whiskey actually offer us? Right. Yeah, man. I, I enjoy this. And I, I enjoy that quick pairing just because of that. Like, it, it proves to me just how damn good that red breast cast strength is. Ugh, man, yeah. it's so good. So if you can find a bottle of that, man, do it. I, <laughs> Look I, at honestly, the price. Look at the price first. Sure, sure. But now having had it, I would say if you can find it, like, I, I know that this is not generally my wheelhouse and I am not someone who's like, oh yeah, go over a hundred dollars. Cause I am the first one to say, nah, hundred dollars hard cap, pass. Hard that cap right is there. the limit. Yeah. But I can tell you, like, if you're if you're someone who is interested in finding a a different version of an Irish whiskey, and if you can find that for less than I'm going to say 120. If you can find that for less than 120, worth it. Worth it. Totally. Yeah. I've seen it pushing 150, man. And yeah. and like, I, I know what you got it for, which was less than 100. You got a steal. I know. Because they got another great. one. Yeah, anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, if wait, you wait, had, wait. No, I'm good. So we want to know what you think about Michael Giacchino just in general. Like, do you like his uh, scores? I mean, the dude has made, you know, I would say at least 20, maybe even 30 movie scores over the last 10, 15 years. That Blockbusters. Just killed. I yeah. mean, everything from like Mission Impossible 3, Incredibles, all the way up through Jurassic World, Jojo Rabbit, Jurassic Jojo World. Rabbit. Like, the, the dude is killing it. And he puts out an album like this that just is 
you know, music nerd heaven. And it's so good. And like, so great to see a creative thing come out of. Right. Right. Unfortunately, uh, you know, because of these circumstances, I was able to find time to do this thing. Exactly. And made such a cool thing with that time. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. And we also want to know if you've had the chance to try the Red Breast Cast Strength, what do you think about it? Or what Irish whiskeys should we try that we haven't yet tried? Yeah. Throw it at us. Absolutely. What should we try to get? You can get in contact with us through email at dreppingstone at gmail.com. You can also get in contact with us through social media. It's always one word, dreppingstone. D-R-E-P and stone. You find us, you like us, we like you right back. 100% so. Like, ain't no other percent. Legit. (laughs) If you want to support the podcast, you can do so in one of three ways, or honestly, Kyle, three of three ways. You can grab your grandma. Grab her by the lapels and say, Grandma, you need to listen to Drep and Stone. And everyone around you, like in your grandma proximity, will hear that. And that's honestly probably... That's enough. That's more the target market anyway. That's, that's enough. Like, They'll just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? Yeah, this this person's list, like okay. yelling at their grandma over Drep and Stone. I need to figure this out. Yeah, Absolutely. I should you try can, that. You can also uh, support us financially through our Buy Me a Coffee page. It's buymeacoffee.com slash Drep and Stone. Helps financially support the podcast. Keeps everything running. Keeps the lights on. The light bar. Sorry. You know, the lights are kind of dim in here, Kyle. We yeah. need a, a couple more. To I, keep I got the lights it on, on the lowest setting. I know, but it's a little dubious. Yeah, it's, just, it's what we can afford. I know. You can also support us through uh, just kind of like word of mouth by telling other people about Drep and Stone. And you can do that through ratings through wherever you find Drep and Stone. Yeah, it doesn't have to be your grandma. You can go onto any kind of social media platform. Just let people know hey, hey, Drep and Stone know what they're talking about. Exactly. Hey, buddy, may your glass overflow and your ass never show. Double clink. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. did that last week that's okay what'd you do no i heard it playing with it okay <laughs> let's stop talking let's get drinking okay buddy okay Herb- herbosity <clears throat> don't, don't put that in there oh night long we, we, when, when, when do i get to know about it uh like a, uh, you know what i mean like uh. <laughs> ew david oh david 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 you might could have filmed that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah nothing offensive <laughs> not yet Stop, stop, stop with your blasphemous ways.